definitely gonna have to take my helmet off because I'm deaf as hell right now. And our customs. Welcome to the United States, Port Hill, Idaho. Oh, my phone's not charging either. I wonder if I blew a fuse. Because it was working yesterday. I'll have to check that. I'll move my uh, charging stuff over. How's it going? What's your flight number, state or province? Where are you coming from? So I came out the top of Washington on a back road route. So it was the uh, Nighthawk exit. How long were you at the Canada? One day. Basically overnight. Where's home for you? Colorado. What do you do for work? Uh, this actually. So YouTube stuff. Off-road and that kind of stuff. What's your, uh, what's your uh, Instagram? Uh, Meerkat ADV. Perfect. We had a girl the other day. Itchy boots girl. Did you oh, she came through here? Yeah, yeah, I know. I know who she is. She's she's got like a million followers. I'm not nearly that popular. Yeah, she's got some cool stuff. I figured she was around here by now. This is navigation, okay. and then that's just a rear-facing camera. Yeah. You got this one here. Yep. Very cool. Good luck. So, all right. Thank you. Take care. Itchy boots just came through. That's great. Good job, Norley. Twelve seconds later. Okay, so the battery died. That's why it's dead. Whatever, I'm gonna let it sit there for a minute. See if it'll charge. Alright, welcome to the Idaho BDR. And I'm going down here. Yield to aircraft. That's funny. Alright. As far as I know, the first bit of this is going to be really chill. The uh, Idaho BDR is considered one of the easiest. I think the only one that's really considered easier is the Mid-Atlantic. And my biggest issues are basically just going to come down to whether I can get through because of snow and tree fall. Yeah, 107 miles to Clark Fork. That's what it's called. That was what I couldn't remember. And there are a bunch of alternates to go up that way and basically get to like campgrounds and stuff like that. But I'm not gonna do that because I don't need to. And when I was looking at it, I actually realized that one of those campgrounds is very close to Ruby Ridge. Which, is it, which if you don't know what Ruby Ridge is, look it up. Um, there was a standoff there between basically the ATF and a family, and they really f***ed it up, the ATF and the FBI, because they, the FBI responded to assist the ATF. And yeah, it was, it was just a bad situation. It was not handled very well. It was around the same time as Waco. If you don't know what Waco is, look that up too, because that was a mess also. But yeah, should get to Clark Fork this afternoon, and the goal will be to stay there for two nights. So I can get a day off, do some laundry, take care of some stuff, and then just continue to work my way south. I'm doing well in terms of schedule. No real concerns there. But yeah, welcome to the Panhandle of Idaho. It is really beautiful up here. And it's about as far north in the country as you can go. These last couple of days have been a lot of fun. That was a great group of guys for the Washington BDR. It was nice to finally get to ride with some folks. And there was some stuff that was challenging enough that I was very happy to have people with me. Idaho, I don't really expect anything to be too challenging to where I need assistance. It's, it really is just going to come down to whether or not there's snow blocking my way or a bunch of trees down or something like that. I, I know there are sections of it that have not been reported to be open yet. And so we're just going to have to kind of 
take it as it comes. The Idaho BDR is the longest BDR. It's a little bit over 1,200 miles long. And so I expect it to take me, ooh, bunny, at least a week, if not longer. All right, let's find a spot to pull over. I'm gonna swap the batteries and the cameras. Let's see if I can get both of them working. It's charging off the battery pack, running off the battery pack, basically. And we're recording. I'm already less than 100 miles from Clark Fork. So I should be able to get there pretty quickly. Over the river and through the woods. Except I ain't going to grandma's house. Up to about 80. I have to assume it's probably going to be fairly warm today. I can't tell if anybody has like a yield or anything. It looks like it's just an uncontrolled day of a yield. Everybody else just has like, go for it. <laughs> Good luck. This is all super pretty. Idaho is supposed to be one of the most beautiful BDRs. I mean, all the BDRs are designed to highlight the beauty of the state that they're in. I mean, the Washington BDR was stunning. God. So far, I would call it my favorite. Oh, wait, I... S oh, my... Oh, no. I need to look at my foot. I, well, crap, I wasn't recording. So I did pass someone on what looked like a 300 rally to like earlier today with luggage that might have been Norley. yeah i waved at her she waved back <laughs> that's funny all right here's dirt and the things i do have to be conscious of now is this is grizzly bear country so when i am camping i will be much more conscious about food and smells in general and yeah other than that I mean all the stuff I normally do I do have bear spray I will be having it in my tent with me and I have it on the bike just behind my right hip well hopefully Norley was able to do some of the Idaho BDR if she came through Port Hill she hopefully did so I'll have to keep an eye out for her videos. Right now, according to her videos, she's still in Mexico. But then again, according to my videos, I'm in New Mexico. So that's the nature of making videos in advance to be released later on. <laughs> But yeah, congratulations, Norley, you made it to Canada. God, look at that. But yeah, so five days straight of riding, and I'll have, oh well, yes, this is day six actually, and then I'll have tomorrow off. National Wildlife Refuge, huh? Kootenai? I don't know how to say it. It's probably right. I think on this stuff I'm just going to keep recording because there's no reason to turn the cameras off when I'm on pavement. Whew, I am I'm a little tired today. Not going to lie. Six days of riding in a row, especially when five of them were fairly difficult in a lot of places is tiring and yeah I am tired all right well I'm gonna turn these off and I will turn them back on when I'm leaving Park River one wiener later sure that's still on oh I got 58 more miles well Idaho you're already living up to expectations I was here for maybe 30 minutes. I had my sandwich and my drink. 
And I had one nice guy come up and talk to me about the Tenere, because he was curious about them and looking at getting one. And then I had another guy who I think just wanted to talk. But that included gas prices and how the government controls the weather through the HARP project in Alaska. He's like, yeah, you ever heard of that? They, they use that to control the weather. I'm like, yeah, I know exactly what that is and it's not a thing. All right, 57 more miles to Clark Fork. I was really kind of just looking for a chill day anyway, so this is perfect. Idyllic is probably the best way to describe this bit. Looks like a lot of postcards all strung out one after the other. That's what I want to see. Narrow winding roads. This is normally what people are seeing at the end of the Idaho BDR, but it's a pretty damn nice start, too. Grizzly country, yep. I wouldn't mind seeing one, preferably from a distance. <laughs> that splashed off the bottoms of my hands. I got a little bit, my face got just a little bit wet. I wonder if I got the camera or not. <laughs> little miniature tree tunnels. is super pretty. Reminds me a lot of Colorado. Up above 5,000 feet already. Yeah, cooled off nicely. 77 degrees. That feels great. Don't expect to be up at this altitude for all that long. I know I dropped back down for Clark Fork. Deer in the road. Probably not gonna be able to see them. There goes one. And they ran straight up the hill into the bushes. <laughs> All right. I just saw two. That's a bear. That's a bear in the road. It's a black bear. Hi, buddy. Yeah, you go on and get up the hill. And I'm just gonna, yeah, you go up the hill. Just one, it looks like. And it was an adult. So I'm not too worried about cubs. Hi, okay, bye. <laughs> God, I never see bears in Colorado unless I'm hiking, it seems like. I see one in Idaho on the first day. Okay, so how can you tell a black bear from a brown bear, which is a grizzly? So that was a black bear, and they are typically smaller. They have basically like a flat back and kind of rounded ears, and I don't know, they're just, they're kind of a more rounded appearance, I guess, is the best way to describe it. And then a grizzly bear has basically like a hump in their back. They tend to be much larger. They have kind of pointier ears and are just generally much larger. They have a different walk to them too. You can't really base it off of color because black bears 
can range any... I mean, they, there's friggin' blonde ones out there. We had a bear in Breckenridge that was named Cinnamon because that's what it looked like. I mean, it, it was the color of Cinnamon. But yeah, so, th so their actual coloration is not match their names necessarily because grizzly bears can also vary in color quite widely i mean it's just like hair color and people there don't tend to be very many i don't know if i've ever heard of a black grizzly bear there they might exist i've just never heard of one um, but there's definitely some like super dark brown ones there you go saw a bear within a couple of hours of entering idaho the other thing is, so black bears are about as harmless as they get. You know, as soon as it saw me, it ran off. I've never had a black bear really be aggressive, but uh, grizzlies can be quite aggressive. and I think a 1090. There's a laundry mat directly next door. Oh, that's friggin' lucky. Okay. I'll go right here for now. Alright, I'll see you in the room. Or sometime later.
Not too bad. What are you guys up to? Just getting ready to go that way. Doing the BDR or? Yeah, hard trying. Nice. Yeah, me too. It's, <laughs> don't, I don't really, know. I mean, Magruder's apparently definitely closed. That's not this section. No, right? that's uh, after Pierce. Okay. Oh, so. Yeah, we're not going that far, so. Oh, okay. We can't do it's, the whole it thing. It should be open kind of all time. the way to Pierce. Huh? It should be open all the way to Pierce. So you should be at least, no, the, the oh, Facebook oh, okay. group's been reporting right. that. That's it's just cool. the Magruder Corridor right now that's closed, and then uh, Trinity Lakes is kind of a, a question mark too, but that's all uh, further south. Okay. So yeah, yeah. We don't have as much time. We like to do it, but. <laughs> yeah, that happens. <laughs> yeah. Well, cool. How's your trip been so far? Good, good. Where'd you yeah. start at? Canada. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I will get out of your way. Yeah. A lot of snow, a lot of trees down. So. We're going to go from the snow being finally melted to fires. Pro probably, <laughs> unfortunately, but, you know, it's kind of the nature of the beast at this point. All right. Well, have, All right. have a good day.
bits of it that have a solid bottom, but that is the problem with logging trucks. They just churn this in the dust. I mean, just talcum powder. miles to Wallace. It's 10.30, so I'll probably get there at 1-ish. Staying left if there's a fork. Oof. Yep, there it is. Oh yeah, because I wouldn't be getting up there anyway. Oh yeah, lots of trees. Dozens of them. Wonder if anybody makes a chainsaw mount for the Tenere 700. <laughs> Gives you an idea of probably what the Magruder looks like right now, except that none of these are clear. It's going to take teams going in with chainsaws for probably a couple of days to clear it, so it won't be clear until mid-July probably at least. Still really fun roads. to take it easy to make sure the trees were clear. Wow. little rocky in a few places but they're all basically embedded rocks so not difficult <sighs> let's see what do I got 12 miles to Coeur d'Alene River I think is what that says river yeah river cliff jump there's apparently an area where people cliff jump in the Coeur d'Alene River a lot it's right next to the road 46 miles to Wallace gas station. This is all just really pleasant riding. Like there's nothing that's gonna like freak you out or anything. You just ride. Oh, hello. How's it going? Oh, you guys are okay. <laughs> it's just me. God, look at all these trees. Just carnage. Okay, we're slowing down. Because Jesus. Christ. They had a wind event back in here or something. Maybe an avalanche. That's just, I mean, that's 50 to 100 trees just across the road. And the Coeur d'Alene River is just off to my right. I just can't see it yet. Oh God, there it is. And here's the cliff diving spot. Looks like something clear. Yeah. Nobody there, but I oh, want a bridge. to these just amazing forests. Ooh, that, that one's 
refund. Please let me go around you. Just me, thank you. I'm not sure that they had clothes on, but not my problem. Okay, where are we at? 3,000 feet. Can't remember what the high point is. I want to say it's seven something. Hi, dear. Hopefully you don't just run up the road. Oh good, I'm gonna do a U-turn. Yeah, you run off now. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. 25 miles from Wallace. So yeah, I'll probably get into Wallace right about one o'clock. Eat, get water for camping, and see how far away the blue cabin is. If anybody knows whether or not it's accessible yet. It's not in too bad a shape now, but... Ugh. That's a KLR. more. First guy waved and then tried to give a hand signal, but I couldn't see it. And the second guy either gave me two behind him or bunny ears. <laughs> 22 miles. Hi dear. I'm gonna stop back here real quick and give you a chance to move off the road. And I'm gonna check on whether my stuff in my tank bag is charging. It is not. And my tablet just dropped to 21% somehow. It went from 32 to 21. So I don't know, it's gotta be, I have to have an accessory port that's just not providing power right now, so. Very nice. Little kid ripping it up. And they actually knew hand signals. Good for them. Low bridge. I think I want to cross over. Yep. And again. And again. <laughs> Also, some of the true, like truly, some of the first like technical stuff. It's mostly just line choice, but coming up this, you'd be working a little bit because you keep having to cross the ruts. This definitely had a lot of water on it. There we go. And big bonk. Oh. And here comes the road, it looks like. <sighs> okay. I'm going to kill the cameras now because I'm on pavement all the way in. And I will talk to you once I'm working on the bike. Eventually. All right. I'm just outside of Wallace. Um, couldn't really fix, well, couldn't find anything wrong with the electrical stuff. So I ended up just plugging the tablet into the bike with a USB cable, which means that my camera's not plugged in. So it's only gonna run for a little while and it's gonna die, but oh well. I did find that something had tried to make a nest in my airbox. 
So dug all that crap out of there. That had to have been from when I was stopped at, when I stayed at Moscow Moto's, Bates Moto Hotel for a week. Because otherwise, I mean, what would have had time to, to do that? It's basically two o'clock, 2.15, whatever. And yeah, Let's see where I get today. Wallace well, is kind of a neat little town. Kind of its only claim to fame is when they found out that they were building I-90 basically right through town. They worked to put every single building on the National Historic Register so that they couldn't tear it down to build the interstate. And so as a result, the interstate is an elevated road through town. Other than that, there ain't a whole lot there. How is it, Africa Twin? This would be an area to see a moose. I mean, there's every likelihood there actually is a moose back in there, or several of them, but they can be really hard to spot. They are surprisingly stealthy creatures for how damn big they are. You would not think something that is eight foot tall at the shoulder can disappear into brush, but they really do. That's cool. down <sighs> can you not block the freaking trail how's it going yeah it's only like a couple of miles so honestly that's probably what I'm gonna do I'm gonna I'll shoot down this and then go back on the tunnel road and then just turn around and go back on the tunnel road. I don't expect this to be particularly gnarly or anything. They said it was just fun. Fun two track. Which, uh, that is correct so far. just them since night but neither one gave me a hand signal I think they were trying not to crash but yeah that was either a 300 rally or a 250 rally and then the other guy was on a 1200 or 1250 something like that kill you guys.
go check out the road road. Oh God. That's a hell of a thing. Yeah, we're gonna leave those on. Holy sh**. <laughs> Man, you can't see a damn thing going into that. Yeah, they have a curve to them, so like you can't see the exit until you're already in it. Whoa, that is freaky. Get back up here and see how far I might have to the blue cabin, which I'm guessing is my next kind of waypoint. I guess I go through Avery first, don't I? God, that is ominous. minutes later just leaving Avery cute little town not much there but they do have gas some food and there's a uh, cabins by the river place so let's see it is four o'clock I am 30 miles from the blue cabin which I know is free so, you know, hour and a half-ish, and the sun's staying up until 9, 9.30, so I might just go for that. And I'm only 94 miles from Pierce, so I got plenty of gas for that. This is super pretty. I mean, technically a river? I would call it more of a creek or a stream, but probably considered a river. I might, eh, I think I'm gonna save the drone. Cause I'm not gonna be able to charge anything necessarily. Oh, tunnels, okay. Now I'm kinda glad that I didn't get the drone out. I'm not sure how well the drone is gonna follow me through a tunnel. I feel like it might try and go up over the top or something. Which wouldn't work very well. Dismal Lake. Wonder if that's related to Dismal Niche. Crappy must your first night have been at that lake to where that's what you named it. <laughs> like you must have really had a bad day. I think this is called Feeble Creek Road. <laughs> Was the person naming all this stuff just clinically depressed or what? the open just like that holy crap fish hook creek road otherwise yeah i was gonna have to be like okay who who hurt you
super easy lines. You just gotta pick them. Bonk. All right, big ditch. Let's go right here. That's a little washed out. Three hundred, and I see snow. Yep, here's more snow. Oh boy, I actually gotta go through it a little bit. trench back there, but whatever. Oh, crap. I didn't think I was going to hit snow like this so soon. So, yeah. God. <clears throat> I think I got to go back to Avery. I thought it was clear to Pierce. So much for that because yeah nobody's made it through here they got to about there and stopped all right so i'm within seven miles of the blue cat six miles yeah i got to within six miles of the blue cabin and there's still snow yeah i'm gonna have to i don't know where i'm gonna go around but i gotta go around quite a bit well i think i'm going back down to the uh cabins, whatever the hell they were called. And that was at basically 5,300 feet. Like, I wasn't even up at high altitude. I know the Magruder's closed, so there's no reason to try and go east out of Pierce. I may just literally end up going kind of straight south to re-intersect with the route. Whoa, dude. With your infant? F you. You have a baby girl based on the color of the hat. Yeah, hi. Two more. All right. Well, is that two more or is that there's just two of you? Driving with one f***ing hand going really fast. That's genius. How can you, like, how can you be that dumb? I don't even know that she was in, like, a baby carrier. Like... You know, like strapped to his chest. Like it looked like he was literally just holding her. All right. So the main one is this, I believe.
Well, welcome back to Avery. I realized it was almost exactly a year ago when I had to get off of the route and get around to McCall. But I'm gonna have uh, breakfast of champions and then get on the route here. But it's 90 something miles to Pierce. I think it's three sections that I missed last time. We'll see where I end up today. Right now I'm just gonna worry about getting to Pierce to get gas. Avery's a neat little town. Um, I ended up kind of just camped in the middle of nowhere last time, just literally on the Forest Service land. Everything's supposed to be open, so we'll see what happens, I guess. Blue Cabin's 30 miles. I got to within, I want to say, 9 miles of it last time. I was not far from it. Idaho remains pretty high up on the holy crap it's gorgeous scale for the BDRs. It's one of the easiest, I would say second to easiest after mid-Atlantic, but it's top three or four in terms of beauty. Honestly, top two. It just depends on what really kind of moves you as a person. Got day two of Oregon done, so that was good. Got it uploaded too. I, the internet at St. Mary's was like super fast. I was shocked. That sucker uploaded in like 15 minutes. Oh, but okay, so what am I doing after this? So I wanna finish these sections of the Idaho BDR, which is the stuff that I wasn't able to do last year. And then I'm headed back to Colorado for a week or two, reset, and heading back out on this other project which I'm working on, which is I am going around and interviewing a lot of the guys that I served with about our time in the military. That's, that's the main project that I'm working on right now. And the problem with that is I can't make any videos from that until I have all of the interviews completed. And so I don't have any video content from that that I'm going to be able to share because I don't know what I'm going to have. I don't know who I'm going to be talking to exactly. The first videos from that are likely not going to be coming out until over the winter. And so, yeah, you're after this last video for Idaho, you're not going to see anything from me for a while. And then it will be a documentary series about our time in the military, which is going to be pretty intense. The tuck stuff should start coming out around that same time, I hope. But we'll see. Don't really know what's going to happen with that yet. The tuck project is kind of one of those ones where you, f you do the trip, you film it all, whatever, and then you kind of just have to ignore it. Yet pretend like it basically didn't happen. It's going to be months before there's any kind of an edit. I have ideas for other stuff. I have one idea that's particularly crazy that I might try and talk to some folks about because I need support if I'm gonna do that. The goal is to keep doing this for as long as I can. I haven't had to stop yet. We'll see what happens. You know, all I can do is kind of take it one project at a time, one day at a time, and see where I end up. Here will be unfamiliar. Get all the luggage. Somebody's definitely in front of me. It's a lot of dust.
fight and saw me. Wake up. Look around. This fucking crap. Honking at you, fucking nothing. Like you have mirrors. See you in your mirrors. Passing! Passing! Use your mirrors. The last guy was paying attention or he was on radio. Nope, well, there's one more. miles to the blue cabin I may not take much of a break there because I don't want that group to pass me again folks you've got to pay attention like I still periodically look behind me just to make sure that I'm not holding somebody up and on a bike I'm gonna be moving faster than most One mile. Oh. oh yeah, that's a full on U turn. Okay. Where is it? There it is. A few moments later. That's fun. It's quite a bit of fun. The side-by-sides were unfortunate. I want everyone to be able to get out here and enjoy the backcountry. You have to be respectful about it. You have to respect other people's rights to enjoy the backcountry as well. And plowing six side-by-sides at the center of the road and never looking behind you is not being respectful to other people. There you go. Welcome to Idaho, folks. It looks like that. <laughs> Here, lift the front wheel up. Lift the front wheel up. Let him out. She's out. Okay. Is he okay? Yeah. I am so sorry. No worries. It just, happens. I know, but just leave that. It'll... Let's make sure he's okay. Sorry about that, yeah, man. Yeah, I expect to have a dog run in front of you. Well, well, I, I, saw her. Her. I saw her run over. Yeah. And I was like, okay, she should be good. And then just... Oh, she's like, Boink. yeah. Yeah, I thought she came clear over behind me. I didn't realize she went back the other way. What can I grab here? Ready? Should still be in gear, so it probably won't roll anywhere. But... Okay. Are you all right? 
I'm fine. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> it's not the worst thing I've ever done to the bike either, so. <laughs> That'll be on YouTube. No! <laughs> I, had two, I had two cameras going. <laughs> One pair of pants later. Holy crap. All right, well, dog's okay, I'm okay, bike's okay. Whew, that scared the f hell out of me. I literally parked this thing on top of that dog. Well, everyone, that was Izzy. She's fine. Thankfully, they were cool about it too, but like that, yeah, there was nothing I could do. Thankfully, the, the side bags and stuff made it to where it didn't lay flat. And so she just scooted out. Oh, f I thought I killed somebody's dog. There's gonna be pavement, so I will probably kill the cameras and talk to you in Pierce. So I will talk to you in a little bit. Three hours later. Welcome to Pierce and the Pioneer Inn slash bunkhouse, which is really friggin' nice. I'm just getting footage downloaded, really hot outside. So I knocked off early and it's a solid 190 miles to Derby tomorrow. So that will be the plan for tomorrow. Hell of a day. <laughs> Hit a damn dog. Cannot believe that. So just getting settled in. I'll go and get dinner and stuff at some point later. I won't get gas until the morning when it's nice and cool. And 190 miles to Derby. So I'm gonna let this finish downloading. And talk to you later. Today is going to be supposedly much better temperatures, highs like 85. It actually rained just slightly a minute ago. Pioneer Inn. That was quite nice. Alright, into the dirt. I'm liking the tires. I probably won't stay with them after I wear this pair out. I have not been disappointed with grip. Sorry, not much to talk about. Just listening to music and cruising the mountains of Idaho.
new. Let's back up a little bit. I might be able to pull this out of the road. But you see why when they when these trails open in the summer, like there's thousands of those down across the trail. It's also why it's not a great idea to kind of hang out in these areas because they do fall over periodically. People have been killed by them. When I was hiking the CDT, I, I saw trees fall over probably half a dozen times. Lolo Trail Corridor, the official beginning of the Lolo Motorway. same ones. They ran up over the hill and came right back out onto the road. I'm not trying to chase you guys. I'm trying to go over here. Big group. Five of them. Got two more, I think. That's really rocky. Holy crap. fun so far. There's little technical bits that are short, but most of it, you're just cruising straight through. It's not a big deal. So many trees. Oh man, there's a bunch of them. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, this is a long damn way. Still 143 miles to Darby. I know that, that it's actually probably 100 until I pop out on pavement. Or at least until I start hitting better roads. But, you know, that's a long way. I've gone 50 miles. <laughs> oh, shit. that was fun. is somewhat technical, but really only because it's a climb. The stuff yesterday was still worse. Oh, I didn't want to follow that, but all right, there we go. Yep, second it is. Just mountain goat up the hill. Yeah, okay. 
now we're getting rocky. But this is supposed to be the hardest stuff on this route, so that makes sense. That's gonna be a good one. Just me. So much nicer than the last couple of days for temperature. The high down in Darby is like 85. as a harder optional. I don't know where your workaround would be other than the highway, but it's uh, it's pretty bad. <laughs> it's a lot of really loose rock. all of the the tough stuff for Lolo at least I'm not sure what Magruder is gonna be like 97 miles to Darby all right well I'm gonna turn off cameras at least for now and let them charge I don't know that I'm on dirt at all for the rest of this so I'll see you in a bit Three hours later. All right, I'm just outside of Darby. Not much sure how far I'm actually gonna go. But yeah, as long as I'm on paved roads, I might as well kind of keep going. It was paved all the way from there to the outskirts of Missoula, so there was no reason to not keep going. young one too. Where's mama? I'm not 
sure where mama was, but I'm sticking around to find out. Another black bear. be me. <clears throat> Good evening. Yeah, long day. Did well over 200 miles. And I'm just camped out up on this ridge here. Should be nice and cool tonight. Just looking forward to that. And... I'll get past Elk City tomorrow. I might make it to Yellow Pine and stay there tomorrow night, but we'll see. I know it's basically 200 miles from Elk City to Yellow Pine. Tired, I'm gonna pretty much lay down and go to sleep because I already had dinner and everything, so I don't need to do that. Lolo was fun. There was some tough stuff in there for sure. Definitely the hardest part of the Idaho BDR. Get up in the morning and uh, get to Elk City. <sighs> All right, good night, later. Good morning. So I will say I don't know what temperature it got down to last night, um, but it was not warm. I was comfortable, but I did have to pull out my other liner bag. I didn't have to zip it up, but I was in it, using it as an extra blanket. All right. Didn't sleep great initially, but that was because I had company in camp. Pretty sure they were either deer or elk. At, every time I would move around to like get ready to take a peek and see if it was Yogi, they would uh, head off. So never got a sight of any of them. There was definitely more than one though. This morning I could see fresh hoof prints and stuff like that, so. I think they were deer, because the prints weren't all that big, but they could have been elk with babies. There was definitely one point where I had the bear spray in my hand and my flashlight in the other, and I was unzipping the tent to get a peek outside and see what the hell was making all the noise, and I could hear it basically run off down the hill. It's like, all right, well, even if it is a bear, at least it's still scared of people and noise, because it wouldn't want anything to do with that. Yeah. 
burn was within the last two years. Ground has barely even started coming back. Which of course also means every one of those trees is going to be falling over in the next ten years. if I can at least help her get this other one out of the way. While Patchy pulls himself together, let's see how SpongeBob's party is shaping up. All right, let's go. But that probably came down this morning because I heard at least two trucks come from this side. attention we'll find out I'm trying to live in his mirrors here boop, boop. people it's not a quiet horn you need to look in your mirrors boop, boop, boop. wake up Wake the f*** up! Open your f***ing eyes! All the rig in the world, and none of the f***ing common sense. Like, I'm on a bike, I'm going 30 through some of this stuff, and I'm still looking behind me just to make sure I'm not holding people up. You're going 5. And you're like, this is fine. No one could possibly be going faster than me on this. Like, look around you. You're not the only one out here. <sighs> if you're in the backcountry, you need to have mirrors. You need to be using them. And you need to anticipate that there will be faster traffic at times. You are not the only person out here. It's the same reason why you need to ride right. It seems like everybody gets out here and they just think they're the only person in the world main character syndrome, I guess. God, look at all the trees. Just hundreds and hundreds of trees down. Thousands. There's easily thousands back here. signals mean I'm not waving am I on this all the way into elk yes okay so I'm gonna kill cameras and I will talk to you in elk city a few inches later so I am topped off and ready to go heading towards yellow pine This is all paved, so I'm not gonna record much of this. But yeah, Elk City was nice. So I'm gonna get up here. It's 204 miles to Yellow Pine. And we'll see how this goes. So I will catch you when I get onto dirt. 20 minutes later. That was a good 20 or 30 miles of pavement. 172 miles to Yellow Pine. Oh yeah, uh, so check it out. I got a new sponsor. 
Moto Camp Nerd, but he has the storefront. He basically sells all the camping gear that I use. He had reached out to us when we were getting ready for the tuck trip and kind of basically said, you know, hey, is there anything that we could do? And so he helped us out a little bit with like some discount stuff on that. And then I got hooked up with him as an affiliate. So there's a link in my description of my video. If you click on it, you get a little bit of a discount and I get a little bit of uh, credit for any purchases that you make. And he's a great guy. He's just a, you know, true motorcyclist adventure rider and started selling camping gear and stuff through a web store because he was tired of fighting to try and find good camping gear for ADV riding. And so most of the stuff that he's selling is not motorcycle specific. It's stuff that's just good for camping use and it happens to work well for moto campers. So like he and I had chatted a little bit about the Big Agnes tents. The bike packing tents are great for motorcyclists because they pack down so small. The three-in-one sleep system was one he started selling after we talked about it because it's just a great quilt system and super comfortable. And I would just encourage you to support him because he's a great guy. Literally, like if you looked at, if you broke down all the camping gear that I have and went and tried to find it all on the Moto Camp Nerd website, you'd probably get 95% plus. He has good taste. All right, going left. I think I'm on this for a little while, so probably gonna turn off cameras. Yep, I'm on it for a minute at least, so I'll catch you later. A few inches later. Sign said heavy truck traffic, so I will be careful. Oh God. like an OHV trail. God, hi. Oh, I don't like those trees. Nope, nope, nope. Get me out of there. Oh yeah, okay. Go straight up over here. Some of the passes in Colorado, but I don't know if it's just because of the, the orientation being a little different or what, but, you know, I'm at 5,600 feet and you just open up to a vista where you feel like you can see forever. But yeah, Colorado, a lot of these, you don't really get that view until you're up above tree line, And then it's different because you're on a full-on mountain. This is the 
Salmon River. It's like a single sided suspension bridge, that's interesting. <laughs> that's so cool. This is probably French Creek grade. Because the waypoint is for people coming north, so it'll be at the other end of it. Well, that's a big rock. reminds me a lot of Washington with the uh, jungle. It was in a lot more shape, but just switchbacks up a hillside, you know, gain a hell of a lot of altitude real fast. And I don't really know if there's a story behind this bus. It's just back here. It was here when they did the filming expedition, you know, so it's been here for 15, 20 years. Anybody really knows what the deal is, like why it got ditched back here. Alright, should be right here somewhere. There it is. story behind that thing. How it ended up there. It's gonna be funny if you watch these videos just as like a series. You'll see the first two or three, I can't remember when, when I had to divert. And then all of a sudden this one will be on and I'll be in completely different, you know, I'll be in a different gear. Like just <laughs> like, wait, what? And then it'll flip back to the other one for the end. God, these things are cool. Alright, Yellow Pine, 49 miles, mine says 47. 90 degrees. Hopefully it will be at 3,000 feet. I hope it'll be cooler in Yellow Pine. The river down here is gorgeous. God, I know. It's just beautiful. This is not really what I needed for the last 40 miles. That's gonna be it for a while guys uh, I'm not gonna have videos after this Idaho video publishes 
that's going to be it for me for a while. So keep in touch. Stuff from the Tuck to Otuck trip will be forthcoming. I'm super excited to see what happens with that. And the other project that I'm working on, which doesn't even have a name yet. I, I have a tentative name for it, but I'm not going to share that until I have a better idea of what I want to do. Stuff from that will not start coming out until sometime over the winter, really. Because it's probably going to be October before I'm even done filming stuff for it. Um, but just know that I am still doing stuff. I'll still be sharing updates periodically on Instagram and Patreon and things like that. So consider checking that out. And send me a message if you're curious. I mean, I, you know, I'm not trying to hide anything. So if you've liked these videos, please subscribe. It helps me out. Consider supporting me on Patreon. That's what allows me to continue doing this. Comment. Ask me questions. I may look at doing a live stream or two if there's interest in them as I get further on this summer. Since I will still be traveling I just and filming, I just won't be editing videos. So if you would be interested in me doing that, let me know. I can do a live stream. You know, what should I do next? You know, I have ideas for things that I want to do. I have a bucket list for stuff that I would like to try. But what would you like to see? I don't know. They don't have to be motorcycle oriented either. It could be anything. I'm looking at trying to go learn how to fly a uh, paramotor. I hiked a thousand miles of the Continental Divide. I'm interested in going back and finishing that probably on a bicycle because I still can't hike. But I can ride a bike. It's Meerkat ADV, not Meerkat Motorcycling. Adventure is what you make of it. At least it's beautiful. Good morning. Let's get out of McCall and over to Yellow Pine. It's July 2nd, it is Saturday, and everything is going to be stupid busy because 4th of July weekend. And I'm probably just gonna go ahead and film the whole way because why not? And I got gas already, so I don't need that. I will get 
water and stuff, probably in yellow pine for camping. I think, I'm, I don't know where I'm going to end up today, it's 200 miles from yellow pine to pine, and the goal is not really to get to pine today, because that would be a little much. And today is going to be a religious day for Ride Right, because there is a ton of people in town. I didn't realize McCall was this big of like a tourist community. God, there was people everywhere. And people on vacation don't believe that there are rules. So they tend to do really silly things. Oh, hi, dear. You're a little one. Pavement ends. Those workarounds are too bad. I was looking forward to seeing some of that. And there is one large water crossing today if I get that far south, which I will be avoiding. Apparently, several people have drowned bikes in it in the last few weeks. There's apparently a pretty easy workaround though, so not a big deal. down to 50 okay that's why I got a little chilly all of a sudden kind of didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to sound like a complainer or anything but it's like man it's actually, it actually got kind of chilly back in here look town 50 oh it actually did get kind of chilly back in here north of yellow pine it goes out and it goes to a place called Bergdorf hot springs and the pass which is elk summit pass I believe between Bergdorf and Yellow Pine is closed. It's still snowed in. So there's a section of trail that I could have followed north of Bergdorf and then diverted off into McCall. A huge chunk of it is paved anyway. So I really didn't miss anything. I mean, I, it was really pretty on the area that I was at. Whatever, you know. Wow. <laughs> I think it was Tana. Somebody, somebody sent me a thing the other day and they did the math on through Owen Wilson's career. He's made, you know, however much money in his career. He said in a movie or TV show or whatever, wow. Uh, like a, a certain number of times. Like, I can't, it was like a hundred or something. And so then for all of the wows that he said in TVs or movies, he's made like $140,000 per one. It was something like, it was something hilarious like that. I'd, I'd probably be okay with saying, wow, myself, if, it, if I'm getting 140 grand for it. Oh, hi, dear. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, this is super churned up. It's not real deep, so it's not causing any kind of handling issues. It's just kicking up a lot of dust. All the side-by-sides and jeeps and stuff just churn it to powder. Honestly, unfortunately, it's mostly the side-by-sides. Most side-by-sides have a, a locked diff, a locked differential um, between the wheels. So it means that no matter what, the outside and inside wheels turn at the same rate, even when going through a turn. A normal vehicle, you have either a limited slip differential, or uh, I can't remember what the other one's called, but basically it allows the inside and outside wheel in a turn to turn at different rates. 
when you're off-road, you kind of want both wheels to turn to pull because it gives you power. And you don't have that on side-by-sides. I don't know of any real side-by-side -side that has a limited slip or free play differential. And so when they're going through this kind of stuff, even if the wheel is slipping, like if it's in low traction environment, both wheels are still pulling. And so that's why it kind of grinds this stuff into powder. Whereas with most passenger vehicles and even 4x4 trucks and stuff like that, this isn't something that you're going to lock the differential on because it's not technical enough, even if you have it in four-wheel drive. It's also why a lot of ATVs tear stuff up. They throw so much more dust in the air. Good God. is awesome had breakfast brunch whatever you want to call it down there at the corner which was excellent everybody knows what the BDR is the general store is owned by a former racer and ADV guy so yeah invert travel direction back oh yeah he's got a nice one just wait a minute. Very nice. He said he was just throwing his gear on. Oops, that's a glove. Oh, I need to ask him his name again. I didn't catch it. A few moments later. Doing 80 miles an hour. <laughs> I've, I've done that on this bike too, where I look down and I'm like, oh, that's 55 on a road that I really don't want to be doing that. Like, I don't want to taco a wheel when I hit a hole or something. <laughs> that's Tim Burke. I know Tim Burke. Mostly his photography. How's it going? How are you going today? Uh, today, I'll probably end up somewhere near Pine. Originally, yeah. A long ride. Uh, yeah. So I I went on the road April first. Oh wow! So I've gone down through New Mexico, up Arizona, Utah, across the top of Nevada, Washington, wow. came, and I'm coming down Idaho. When are you gonna go home? Uh, hopefully never. <laughs> <laughs> the 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 goal is I'm I joke that I'm calling it ride till I can't. So, yeah. I'll go. I'll go back through Colorado late August, um, so I'll stop by, see family, and do some chores. <laughs> What's this thing? It's camera. Oh wow! So I do YouTube stuff. Okay. So, so yeah. You're tracking your trip. Uh, yeah, it's sort of like photo albums, but video. Okay. So, yeah. mo mostly catches a lot of me swearing in the helmet and you know getting stuck in bad situations. How do we Meerkat. Meerkat. Because <laughs> that's what you. Because that's what you look like when you're standing up on the bike. Does your back get sore? Right? Um, I mean sometimes, but mostly that's just from being in the military <laughs> more than more than being on the bike. Outstanding. All right, well enjoy. Yep. Have a good one. All right. 
right, so I got Tim Burke with me, running into each other in the middle of nowhere, Idaho. That's hilarious. He's gonna ride with me for about 30 miles and then we'll split off because he's going home and I'm continuing towards Pine. And it sounds like I may get closer to Pine today than I thought because the lady at the corner store was telling me it's actually pretty damn easy. But yeah, that's funny. So if you don't know Tim Burke, look up Tim Burke Photography and you will uh, see a lot of really good photos of motorcycling. He traveled around the world for several years. His Instagram is amazing. And he got back and kind of settled in to regular life as an airport operations manager here in Idaho. And 197 miles. Oh, I'm only 50 miles from Deadwood Reservoir. Okay, so I'm gonna make it past there today. Good Lord. I thought it was further away than that. God, it is just beautiful back here. Yeah, we're gonna be ripping on this road for a minute. God. But yeah, if you know about Upshift Magazine or kind of any of those ones, you'll have seen Tim Burke's pictures. I didn't know what he looks like because he doesn't really ever share photos of himself. If they are, he's in riding gear. So yeah, I didn't really know what he looked like. Yeah, he was talking about the uh, 900. He'll catch himself going way too fast on stuff. And it's because the bike is just so smooth. The only problem with that bike is that with the triple, it really wants to make power higher up in the rev range. Now, Triumph's done a really good job of fixing that with the 900 because they made it basically imitate a 270 degree firing angle like the Scrambler used to have. And so it makes power lower earlier. But all of the triples, they, you kind of have to rev them to really get them to perform. And he was joking like, he, sometimes he feels like he's just gonna burn his clutch because he's having to rev it so much. sure this is the section that they were joking about on their video that they got here and he marked a waypoint as end rally stage because yeah but yeah we were kind of talking about side by sides and he made the point you know oh hi dear that uh the side by sides and some of these other off-road vehicles have lowered the bar to entry for off-roading and recreating fairly far into the backcountry on even some pretty gnarly stuff. It's had other effects that aren't necessarily as positive. I will always support people recreating in the backcountry. It, like, enjoy nature. That's, that's why we've preserved a lot of these areas, so that people can enjoy them for recreation. But there's a responsibility that comes with that as well to ensure that other people can also recreate and enjoy it. When you're being a jerk and not being responsible with how you're behaving in the backcountry, it affects other people and it affects other people's enjoyment. And so by lowering the bar to entry to something where basically anybody, if they have enough money, can buy one of these vehicles and get just about anywhere, you run into people who don't have the skills, knowledge, and experience in enjoying the backcountry to behave responsibly. They, they literally don't know what they don't know. And they don't know that what they're doing is in some cases kind of ruining it for everybody else. That's pretty loose and deep. Oh yeah. 
let's go over here. Yes, please. You know, that's one of the things that the BDR organizations are really good about is advocating for responsible stewardship in the backcountry. One of the main things that they do is advocate for responsible backcountry riding, staying on trails, riding right, not harassing wildlife, riding responsibly, like all of these things are things that everybody should be doing when they're enjoying the backcountry. So treat it nicely. I think that was a 690. <laughs> Same deal. You got to you got to ride right. Got a big old group. It'd be great if anybody was giving me hand signals on how many there were. Ooh, that's deep. Holy sh! Let's let's make sure he's still with me after that. Hi, dear. Excuse me. Excuse me. Thank you. seen a lot of deer for the amount of traffic that's been coming up this road. They sure don't seem to mind. One more. Going fast as hell side by side. He indicated there might be one more, but I don't think so. Yeah, I turn right up here in a minute. Yep. He's got the quick shifter on that thing. Oh, he probably knows these roads a hell of a lot better than I do. <laughs> this is the kind of stuff where you feel like a friggin' speeder bike. See if I can do this without eating <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to put my side stand down, but Let me get you yeah, you got a big rock for me. 
Yeah, I think this is where we say goodbye. I go that way to Stanley. Yep. The BDR goes that way. We'll get a photo of them. Oh, absolutely. Oh. Side by side the quad. Did they let you pass? After a bit. I think it took them a second to realize he was, was like zooming up and slowing down. Some of that fing sand though can get. Oh my god, that one. I, there was one corner I actually slowed down to make sure you were still there. Because came into the corner and it's like, oh sh that's deep. <laughs> I, yeah, the only, I knew about it because I came up yesterday. Sure. And I fing sent my rear end out way beyond my front wheel. <laughs> All right, man, I, safe travels. You as well. I'm gonna get on over here. <laughs> No. What's that? I said if you run into any issues in Idaho, let me know. I'll no, no worries. Take it easy. Alright, well, that was the man, the myth, the legend, Tim Burke. Always nice to run into a friendly face. Alright, well, I got eight miles to Deadwood Reservoir. I got 37 miles to this creek crossing. 155 to Pine. I do not anticipate making it to Pine today. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to. It's just I'm not trying to. Oh, butterfly. Oh. Jesus, dude. He was indicating he was by himself, but Christ, he was probably doing 70. Like I think, I, I think the fastest I got going back there was 55-ish, and that was when I was on a long straightaway where I could absolutely see where I'm going. That dude had to be going close to 70, and he was doing it coming around a corner. There's like four or five campgrounds all right along the lake here. Says 84. Ooh. I don't remember seeing pictures of this, but yeah, okay. That's called a Widowmaker. AKA Nope Tree. It's so funny, it's like as soon as I said bye to Tim, I have not seen any other motorcycles. <laughs> Hi dear. Bye dear. <laughs> oh, 31 miles to the Loman gas station. So I should make that today. So I'll stop there, fill up, and grab stuff for dinner. And I might just see whether or not there's anywhere to stay in Loman, like a campground or park or something. flowers. What a view, what a view. Let's go look at what this looks like. That doesn't look that bad. It, it's definitely flowing. Oh god, yeah, you can hear the water from here. Oh yeah, it gets deep in the middle. You can see... Oh, there's big rocks too. Yeah, it just drops off like right there. That's at least knee deep. With big rocks. So yeah, that's going to be a hard no for a while. I would guess little bikes could probably do it, but anything bigger than probably a 500, and you're gonna need three people just to hang on to it while you walk it across. Cause yeah, that water is just gonna try and take the bike. 
it's flowing fast. So, okay. We'll get down here, reconnect with the route, and get into Loman, which is 22 miles away. But yeah, I guess as many as five people have drowned bikes in that creek crossing and had to get back into Loman. the GoPro Max because unfortunately last night was like the night of broken toys. I don't know what the hell was going on but I broke a foot on my tent. I broke the mount off of my GoPro Hero 8. What else did I break? My sleeping mat's still going flat. It's very slow though. So like I filled it up once overnight and it was fine. This was a weird stay. This is Haven Hot Springs. I have still not spoken or seen the owners. Spoken to or seen the owners. No like map or anything of like how this stuff is set up. Like it was literally just choose your own adventure. <laughs> I had to text message them and be like, so where do you want me to set up a tent? They had their sprinklers running all the time and they were running overnight. Like, I don't, I don't know. I got 94 miles to Pine. From there, I have 174 miles, I believe, to Jarbridge. No idea where I'm gonna stop tonight. That's not my exit. It is, where the, where the hell is it? Oh, it's right there, Jesus. kind of where I may, I don't know, I may maybe try and stay put for a day. Just the July 4th traffic is ridiculous. Just all day yesterday was dodging people. Let's see, so after Jarbridge, I'm gonna get somewhere where I can stay for a day. I need to mail off the GoPro to get fixed. I will need to talk to Big Agnes about my tent and my sleeping mat. See if they have any thoughts. So yeah, my other Hero 8 is, I can still use it, I just have to hand hold it because I can't put a mount on it because it broke off on the bottom. I think I rattled two of the screws out and then when I tried to adjust it, I just snapped the other ones because it literally just came off in my hand. It was like, oh, okay, well, I mean, I have GoPro cares, so. 
that's not that big of a deal. I just, but I probably have to mail it to them and then have them mail it to me back. That's pretty loose. It's a twisty little road. Like, there's nothing really difficult on it. There's a few little technical bits where the road's kind of just been washed out a little bit, but. It is supposed to be cooler today and tomorrow, so that will be nice. The high in Loman was like 76. The nice thing is, on this kind of stuff, I don't think I'm gonna see too many people, other than maybe other bikers. So I, mean, I still gotta be careful, because I don't wanna come around a corner and hit a 1200GS head on. Oh man, this is just fun riding. It's like so much else of the Idaho BDR. There's nothing really difficult about it. You're just enjoying the scenery and enjoying the riding. If you're if you're trying to do your first BDR and you're out here in the Western United States and you're like nervous about whether you can do it or not, do the Idaho BDR. It's also really good if you're solo and you're not sure if you are gonna be able to ride some of the other routes. Oh God, nope, going in the ditch. <clears throat> Damn it. That was super loose, holy crap. <laughs> That'll happen. Yeah, okay. Whew. Well, there's the washout. All right, well, there's the washout. That's probably definitely more difficult going south to north because your climb out is steeper but yeah that whole culvert got displaced they're gonna have to go in and rebuild the road ah uh, because there's no sign on the other side that'd be nice but yeah if you're going south to north there's a road closed sign. If you're going north to south, there's not. God, dude. <sighs> going up the middle of the road with a trailer. I may just stop and pine if I find a spot. The number of stupid on the road right now is just not safe. Like, if you have to swerve hard because of oncoming traffic, you're doing it wrong. Everybody's driving around here like they're the only person on the road. Oh god, I just murdered 
like 16. Here comes somebody on the wrong side of the road again. I can't be any further over, you know? Doing everything I can to give you room. And you're coming in just in the middle of everything. Wake up. God, he turned into me. Yeah, I think I try and stay in pine. And let the uh, stupid dissipate a little bit before I continue on. There we go. Wink. Oh, oh, hey, turn right. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna make you stop, sorry. This is the most sustained technical section I've seen on the Idaho BDR so far. It's still not real bad, but you definitely gotta be paying attention. Going up this would not be super easy. Very pretty. God, there's a house back here. Obviously the tree's not actually doing anything, but it's funny. A little rocky and washed out in here. Oh my god, yeah, no thank you. Going through that sideways. Yeah, the side-by-sides have just churned the turns into dust. All of the, God, yeah, look at this. It's just powder. Yeah, I don't know why I am just not, I am not in a good mood today. I don't know what the deal is. I mean, some of it's just the number of idiots out right now with 4th of July weekend. I think I'm also just a little bit tired. Didn't want to go over here, but sometimes you just gotta go with it. Alright. Oh, hey bikes. Let's see what we got. Bunch of bikes, good lord. You guys look like you're out having fun. 20 minutes later. Nice group of guys, most of them are from Canada. Got one guy from California, out here going south to north. All right, you guys have fun. couple of them knew who I was, <laughs> so that's funny. Heard at least seen stuff, probably gained a couple of subscribers there. But yeah, most, they're basically all of them except for one were from Canada, and they met in Jarbridge and are going north. So I let them know what was open, how they could get through and all that stuff, 
and they're gonna work their way around. So they were camped between Jarbridge and Pine, I think, is where they were at last night. And they had set up camp and done their whole thing. And then the sheriff's office had to come in and land a helicopter, like, damn near in their camp. They showed me some pictures and stuff from it. And it, the wind actually blew two of their bikes over and one of their tents away because they had to flight for life somebody. It's like, oops. And everybody's been mentioning the sugar sand down south by like Jarbridge when you're going across kind of the desert. So I definitely gotta keep an eye out for that. We might just crack 8K. Oh, it's gonna be really close. 79.81. Eight sixteen. There we go. That brightened my day. That was actually really nice to talk to those guys. Well, there's a sight for you. Jesus Christ! Get on your side of the road. Stop cutting the corners. I'm gonna get smeared by some drunk ass on a side by side who doesn't know how to r drive is on the right side of the road. 16 miles to Pine. It's basically one o'clock and I am exhausted. I have not been on a paved road since turning off from Loma. Blow the suck down. <laughs> that was actually hilarious. Want to trade?
I can take a picture of you if you want. Oh, thank you. That is awesome. How's it I'm going? already here. I'm Brady. Where are you from? Colorado. Awesome. Very cool. Where you guys from? doing the BDR? We are. Yeah. You, you too? Yep. Going the other way. Man, he's got it. He's got it twicked out. What? Look at that GPS screen. Well, yeah, that's, that's great looking. Golly. <laughs> when it's home, you got to kind of make it yours. That is a hell of a <laughs> GPS. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've never seen. I think it's that. a little iPad, maybe. I think you're right. Nice meeting you, bud. You too. Yeah, right, safe, dude. Have fun. Go fast, so don't what, die. What's your total trip going to be? What's that? How long are you going to be on the bike for total? Uh, as long as I can. Really? You're just going to keep going? If I, if I can, yeah. yeah. That is a big old group of guys. And the biggest bike is a 701. There was a couple of 690s, but yeah, 690, 701. Florida Panhandle, Arkansas, all over the place. They trailered out and they're heading up. It is so funny how much the bike is just, like Yennefer is just a magnet for these guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. Just look over and there's a group of them taking pictures. Okay, thank you. get a feel for how big it is by how much of a drop off you have on the other side so I wonder they probably started yesterday and camped somewhere along here and then they were just getting going this morning anytime you got a group that big like you're not gonna move super fast <laughs> you, you just can't hill country basically not quite down into like the desertish stuff we'll get to that pretty quick it looks like I might be able to get down here and get through it before it warms up too much today which would be really nice should have put my earplugs in. I wasn't quite expecting to be able to go this fast. Welcome to the Idaho desert. I mean, you can just see forever. There's the windmills, so I'm on the, okay, so I know where I'm at now. So when I came out of Nevada and into Idaho, I was on the other side of those windmills. Only 120 miles from Jarbridge. This road's got a lot of gravel on it. Ooh, lots of birds, all right. Let's not hit one. I've been doing good. I still have not hit a bird while on the bike. God, just the, the grass. Like, it's just an endless field of grass. It is so pretty down here. All of Idaho has just been so beautiful. I wish there wasn't as much gravel on this as there is, but not much I can do about that. Thank you. 
Excuse me, Jackrabbit. Turn, dude. I'm not chasing you. So far, Idaho is the only one that I have had to make significant diversions to get through. Come on, number 78, move. Thank you. Pretty crazy when you look around and realize the only thing man-made that you can see is the road. Yeah, the northern bit's definitely a lot prettier. This ain't bad though. There just ain't a whole lot out here. Unless 
I run into something that slows me down significantly. Which is always possible. Oh yeah, that's deep gravel. Okay. Yeah, they graveled over all the sandy bits, I think. It's also not hot, which is really pleasant. It says it's 80, which is about right. Because we're down in this canyon. But it doesn't feel real bad, so I'll take it. So yeah, good news, bad news. Good news, there is no deep sand or hole dust between Jarbridge and Pine. Bad news is there's 70 miles of freshly laid gravel instead. Have fun. Oh, here's the border. Right there. All right, welcome to Nevada. Again. <laughs> All right, here's Jarbridge. Wonder if there's a sign. Probably not. Two hours later. 